Hey guys, welcome to my video. Today we're going to take a look at booting from a USB drive and attaching a USB drive in VMware. Today I'm using Workstation Player version 17 and I'm running that on a Windows 11 PC. So let's go ahead and jump right in here guys. By default you will not be able to attach and or boot from a USB. So I'm going to show you a few things you need to do to overcome that. So let's go ahead and create a new virtual machine. If you guys don't have VMware Workstation Player, it's absolutely free for personal use. I'll include the link for the download in the description. And speaking of free, please like and subscribe to my videos. That's absolutely free for you as well. And I really appreciate it. It helps me out. All right. So you can select on this first screen. I will install the operating system later. We're going to use this as a VM to boot from USB. So we don't really need to install anything. You can say Linux and select other. Not super important because we're not actually going to install an OS. And then give it a name. Name my boot from USB. It's just the name of the virtual machine. And you can make this as small as you want. I'm just going to say one gig for the disk because again, we're not actually installing anything. Next, I'm going to customize my hardware. You can leave this smaller if you don't have a lot of resources. I've got a pretty beefy computer. I uh, just built this one. So I'm going to say eight gigs and four cores. If you're not using some of this stuff, it's best practice just to remove it. Not necessary, but I'm just so used to doing this type of stuff. I'm going to remove the CD and I'm going to remove the printer. I won't be using those. And let's take a look at the USB controller. Uh, I'm not going to be using Bluetooth. I do have three USB 3 device or ports, I should say. Uh, if you're not sure, just check your slot. If it's blue, the USB port, that's an indicator it's going to be 3. Uh, if it's white, it's just going to be the old uh, 2.0. Um, format so either one but if you have three you just select three there and then click close here and then we can click finish and now we essentially have a blank virtual machine in the library so first thing we'll do guys is we'll power it on and it tried to boot but there's nothing to boot from so it's going down the uh, boot order. It's trying to do a pixie boot or a network boot here, but there's nothing to boot from on the network. So what we need to do is take a look at removable devices since we want to boot from a USB. And you notice that these are all grayed out. So that's the first thing we're going to have to address. So to address that, we're going to modify the VMX file. Um, a lot of things in VMware can be done through the GUI or the graphical user interface, but sometimes you have to modify the configuration file or the VMX file to address some issues. Similar in Windows, um, when you can't do it through the UI, usually the registry or command line can take care of it for you. So to figure out where the location of the VMX file is, on the virtual machine, go to Manage, Virtual Machine Settings, click the Options tab, and down here you'll see the Working Directory. Make note of that or just copy it to your clipboard close out of there and power off the VM. You want to have it shut down when you modify the configuration file. And then open a Windows Explorer. Navigate to that path if you've copied it. Great. Okay, so here's the VMX file. Right click. You're going to do open with notepad. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of settings here. Each one of these strings is a, a command essentially or a configuration to tell the um, virtual machine how to behave. I've got some of my notes here. Let me drag that over to the screen. So the first thing we're going to add to address the grayed out USB devices, we're going to look for a line and this will be in the description guys. So don't worry about jotting it down. So you can do a control F to find and then paste in what I have in the description. And there it is. So this line here is what's actively graying out all of those USB devices. So it's just by default, it says USB restrictions, default allow equals false. If you just completely delete that line and then save, we should now see that those devices are not grayed out. So let's go ahead and launch the VM again. And there's going to be a couple other things we have to modify in that VMX file, guys. But for demonstration purposes, I want to take you through one by one, just so you can see what changes are doing what. So we'll power this guy on. And then we'll go to removable devices, and there you go. Now we see that they're not grayed out, and we're allowed to connect them. So I'll go ahead and connect. This is the USB that I want to interact with, so I've connected that one. I hit OK. 
and then we can go ahead and reboot the VM and we see once again it did not do anything it just went straight into network boot and let's do it one more time if you guys aren't familiar with rebooting a VM you can do it from the GUI but if you click into here and instead of control alt delete you can hit control alt and insert and that's basically the control alt delete for the virtual machine which will do a reboot let's do it one more time just to display how fast this goes like there's there's not a good chance you're going to be able to click in there and hit escape and vmware escape is to get to the boot menu and f2 is to get into bios or the enter setup um having it reboot that fast let's do it one more time it's extremely hard to hit the button in time so this is where the vmx file comes in again we can add what they call a boot delay so let's take a look at that before we modify the vmx file again power off the virtual machine <laughs> And then we'll get back into that VMX file. Same thing, right click, open with notepad. This time we're gonna add a string. And this is also gonna be in the description guys, so don't worry about jotting it down. So this time we added a brand new string called bios.bootdelay space equals space. And then I've entered a value of 10,000. These are milliseconds, so that will equate to a 10 second boot delay. During that boot delay is where we have the um, the ease of entering either, like I said, escape for the boot menu or F2 if you want to get in there and modify the setup. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll take a look at that boot delay. So I just hit control S to save. You can go to file save, however you want to do it. Close it out and then we'll launch the VM again. Okay, let me drag that over. So if we launch it this time, we should have a pretty significant delay. See this countdown right here? Six, five, that's the delay. So if I hit escape, that's gonna bring me to my boot menu. Now this is still in legacy BIOS mode, so it's probably not gonna allow us to boot from these removal devices. So let me hit enter. And again, it didn't. It just went straight down the boot order and tried to go to um, the network boot, even though I selected removable devices as the boot option. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into the VMX file. Again, I wanted to show you this one at a time, right guys, so you can see which changes did which, just for demonstration purposes. You can obviously do all three of these at the same time. So this will be the last change to the VMX file. Open with Notepad. This time we're going to change the firmware to um, UFI or EFI. By default, it's gonna use a legacy BIOS, so we're gonna add another string. And this one is firmware space equals space EFI, and that has to be in quotes because it's a string. So let's save this, close. Let's launch our VM one more time. One thing to note, guys, is when you change the firmware from legacy to EFI, it's gonna dismount the um, USB that you had attached so we need to be mindful of that so if we go back here to removable devices we see that it's not attached so we need to connect that again hit OK and then let's reboot this one more time and now if we hit escape to get into our boot menu we're gonna see that we see EFI USB device now I have a new um, custom USB this one is available in my shop so head on over and check it out. I'll have the link in the description. It's you or excuse me, it's bootableusbs.com. This is the latest one I've uploaded. So let's go ahead and hit enter here to boot. And this is going to get us into a custom event toy image. That's a multi boot. This specific one is called L3 or L cube, which is the Linux lovers library. And I've got 10 different, 10 of the best or highest rated Linux distributions or operating systems of 2023. And for some of these, I have several flavors. So like mint, we're running cinnamon. We've got matte and we've got XFCE. Done that for a few of these, KDE and Gnome on Majaro as, long as, as well as the XFCE. So this gives you an opportunity. Um, all of these are live with the exception of uh, Deepin, but everything else you can run live. So you don't have to install anything. You can just boot from this USB and test out um, any of these distributions to see which ones that you like and if you want to install one the install option is also available on all these So again guys head on over to bootableusbs.com and if you use the code Unicorn L3 you'll get 10% off on this USB. That's a limited time offer. So check it out. 
So let's just test one of these out, guys. We're going to go ahead and boot into Linux Mint. Give that a second to boot up here. Start Linux Mint. And we will do, while we wait for that guys, we will do one more thing. Uh, since this is a virtual machine we created strictly for the purpose of booting from USBs, uh, we can go ahead and change the boot order. That way we don't have to mess with the uh, boot menu every time we want to get into something and work on something. Um, again, you'll have that delay there, so you got plenty of time. Okay, here we go. Linux Mint's loading up. This is on a USB 2.0, so it's not the fastest thing, but once it loads up, you really can't tell the difference. It's got a lot of this running in memory. Okay, there we go, guys. So the Linux Mint distribution has loaded. You can see once it's in there, it's really fast. Everything's super responsive. And if you like Linux Mint Cinnamon, here's your option to actually install that. I'm sorry, right here, you can install that. But yeah, this is a, if you haven't seen Linux Mint before, it's one of the, I would say, probably the highest recommended Linux distribution for new Linux users who are used to um, Windows. It's very user friendly. You've got a lot of the built in stuff right here. Unlike Microsoft, you actually get a full-blown version of Office with Linux. Um, Libra is one of them, very popular one. You can open the Microsoft Office format files and modify them here and save them, things like that. So just one of many things that a lot of the modern Linux operating systems come with. So yeah, just for demonstration purposes, I wanted to show you that we can boot into that. And then if we go ahead and restart, that'll restart the entire virtual machine once we hit enter there. And like I said, let's jump into the um, setup this time. So we can go to enter setup and then let's configure boot options. And let's go ahead and change the boot order. And we'll just move these guys down by hitting the minus sign. And really all we care about is USB at the top. So that should be good. We'll hit enter. And then we will commit changes and exit. And then we will exit the boot ma or maintenance manager. And then we can reset the system. And we do still have that 10 second delay in place through the VMX file. If you're happy with this and you're only gonna boot into this and you don't need to get to any menus, you can remove that or make it one second. But this time we don't have to access anything. The default boot option is gonna be USB. So you can just wait 10 seconds or like I said, go back into the VMX file and modify it if you want. That way you get a quicker boot time when you're looking to boot from USB. So there it is guys, there's our brand new custom USB now available in my shop. Check it out. I'll have the link in the description. Again, don't forget to use that code unicorn L3 and you're going to save yourself 10% on this particular USB. All right, guys, that was the tutorial step by step on how to get VMware Workstation Player 17 uh, able to attach and also boot from USBs. We also take, took a look at a couple other settings in the VMX file that was changing the firmware over to EFI. And then we also uh, modified the VMX file to allow us to have that boot delay, which is super handy. If you don't have that, I mean, you're not going to have a lot of luck booting into anything or accessing any of those menus. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you haven't checked out my shop, I just got it up a few weeks ago. I've got some, uh, some merch on there, so I've got a coffee cup available, reasonably priced too. It's under 10 bucks. There's some socks on there, and then I've got my uh, latest USBs, my custom USBs up there, all available. And um, like I said, the link will be in the description. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't done so, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. And until the next one, take care, guys.